Hello! Today I want to show you how easy it is to create new clusters in cloud providers with Cordant. What you see here is a visualization of the clusters I already have. I have my management cluster, which runs Cordant. In this case, this is running locally, but this cluster could run anywhere in the world. We support any Kubernetes clusters. And we already have a cluster at AWS. This test one Michael cluster, which is my name. And we also have one at Azure, which is called test one as well. Now we want to create a cluster. With Cordant, it couldn't be easier. All you need to do is to create an object called cluster deployment, where you define a template. We have many templates already, and you can also create your own with Cordant very easily. And you provide in a configuration that tells Cordant what you're interested in to configure this template. In this case, we tell it a control plane instant type, how many control planes we want, which region, which workers, and which instance type these workers should have. Every template has different configurations, and if you build your own templates, you can also create your own configurations. So let's do the same also for Azure. I have a preparation here for Azure as well. And you see here, I define a template that says demo Azure standalone. And it has slightly different configurations because, for example, the size or the type of VMs is different. But again, all I have to simply do is to define these different configurations. I create one single cluster deployment object and Cordant will do the rest. So if we go back to our visualization, we see that we now have two clusters being created, the Cordant AWS Test 2 Michael over here and the Cordant Test 2 in Azure. Now, if we look actually into these clusters, we will see that um, they will slowly be propagated with more and more objects. This one is just being started, and we can see, for example, how now at AWS, we have an internet gateway that's already been created, NAT gateways are being created, the subnet and the VPC is already ready. If we go to the Azure one, we see the Azure cluster by itself, we see the resource group is already ready, while the VNet is not ready yet. So based on these names, you can see that Cordant actually knows the difference of these different clusters, how they work, how they configure, and also the providers behind. Now, our test2 cluster, we see that all the different AWS pieces are already created. So AWS created them for us. And now what's happening is that the different machines are being created. We have our machine that already has been bootstrapped in infrastructure. So AWS has created the machine already. The node is not healthy though yet. And this is all happening on the background. If we look at an actual provision cluster, like our test one that is already done, we see all the different pieces. Um, we can see our AWS cluster, which has all the different pieces that are needed to run this cluster. And then we have the control plane. We saw before that we only wanted one control plane. And we have our two machines. So these are the nodes in this Kubernetes cluster that are running here and over here. Now for the keen eye and people that have been using CAPI or Cluster API before, this will make a lot of sense. You will feel familiar and that's because Cordant uses Cluster API under the hood. So when you create such a template, Cordant will communicate with CAPI and it will make sure that all the correct Cluster API objects are created without you ever needing to actually write all the different YAMLs that are needed for our clusters. So this will take now a couple of minutes, depending on the infrastructure provider um, and also how big the cluster is. But usually setting off a cluster should not take more than a couple of minutes. While we wait, we can not only look at the visualization, we can also look on the console. As this is a Kubernetes cluster and we're working with Kubernetes object, there's also the possibility to actually watch for the status of our clusters. We tell our system to show us the status of the AWS test 2. And we can see ready. It's not ready yet. And the status says that we're waiting for the control provider, that the control plane has been initialized, and we're also waiting for the replicas of the machines. So if we give this a little bit, we will see how slowly these, these statuses will update. And eventually, Cordon will tell us that this cluster is up and running if all the status is ready. And here we go. We have our cluster deployment that shows us ready. We can also test the one for Azure. And we also see that one is also ready. Going back to our visualization, we can see we have four clusters all provisioned. And if we look at our test two, this one now also has the AWS cluster ready, all the machines for the control plane, which there is only one, and now also two machines for the clusters itself. 
All right, great. We have our four clusters up and running, very simply created at AWS and Azure without learning much about CAPI and the easiness of Cordant to create your clusters. Now, if I like to actually access these clusters that I just created, there's multiple ways to do this. The simplest is to just tell Cordant to give me a cube config that allows me to access these clusters directly. I can do this with simple commands. This generates me the Azure test one, and this one creates me the AWS test one. And in this specific file, my make file creates these files under kube config. So if I check kube config, we can see all my different kube configs. And what I can do is just tell the kube config that I was just created. This is the Azure test one, and tell it, for example, run kube control get node. And we see we have our current Azure test one, Michael. I can do the same one also for AWS. So I select the kube config for AWS. I run this one, and I have my clusters running there. 